But uh, it, it in itself was a great thing to do. And it was a real learning experience for everybody, but also for the guys, because they came back afterwards and we talked about Greece, and we talked about the perceptions of Greek people, which weren't necessarily always positive, and certainly weren't accurate in a lot of cases. So that in itself, at a very, very simple level, was really, you know, it was a small, minor thing, but it was a really nice thing and a good thing. And it's lovely just to say to know that my school has a friendship with a school in Greece. You know, and it's, it's nice, that's nice. Anyway, um, I suppose on a, a more official or a broader level, I think the significance of, of this particular project, and to kind of return to some of the things that Alan Smith had said here yesterday, Alan had said that the purpose of these projects was improvement of quality through European cooperation. Now, without a doubt, we have done that. And what's really significant is that it's improvement of quality in lots of different <coughs> and unrelated areas. So while it might seem that this is very bitty, you know, that you're talking about personal development in Greece, but you're talking about modular short-term courses in Norway. The reality is, the reason it's busy is because, as Valentina said, it was needs-driven. So unlike some projects which focus maybe on the theme and try to get the practice to relate to the theme, this started on the ground with what the teachers and the listeners would have thought or wanted. And then it, it, it adapted itself to, to the themes within the European So I think, like I said, what was nice or what's great about this is that it started with prison teachers and it went up to government level and it went back down into the cells and into the prison classrooms. So what's very significant is the impact it had on policy. We saw that in Bulgaria. And I cannot stress how significant what is actually happening in Bulgaria. What's happening now is that, Val uh, doesn't mind me paraphrasing my own way, a prison education system. In Bulgaria, the prisoners were being taught at primary level. They were being taught the same curriculum and using the same materials as primary school children. Because of what Valentina saw in Norway, she presented to her government an alternative model. And this alternative model is firmly based in the adult education philosophy. And now the Bulgarian government is working on policy to introduce adult education into the Bulgarian prisons, where it's going to be in prisons, not in Bulgarian society. That hasn't even happened on the outside of Bulgaria yet. It's happening in the prisons first. So this is a major, major sea change. So that's what I mean when we say it's impacting on policy. Now, it's also a project like this is impacting on provision. How you provide the education, not the type of education, but how you provide it. So as we saw, and as you all saw the example from the Swedish prison two days ago, we see how that provision of the education is going to be translated into the Czech Republic, and how it will now be possible for every prisoner eventually in the Czech Republic to access education. And similarly then, it's been adapted and looked at in the UK as well. So it's impacting on policy, it's impacting on pr pr provisions, and of course, because we're so many of us for prison teachers, it's impacting on practice. So we've seen that then in the situation between the Irish and Halas or our Ireland and Greece, and how the, the practice, how the teachers are teaching, the, the, the methodologies, their tools, how that's impacting as well. Now, um, I suppose to take a little sideline here, what's also important for the EPA was this was an opportunity for us to go to the Council of Europe and show them how we are actually applying their policy. So as an NGO who's, who said, who goes to Council of Europe and said, these are our sacred aims, and this is what we're doing on a practical level on the ground to 
to, to bring forward those eggs. And it has to be said they were blown away in the Council of Europe because that's exactly what they want. It's this vast organization with these wonderful ideals that is desperately trying to hear from its people how its ideals are actually being, happening on the ground. So for them, they were delighted with us. They were delighted with this presentation because they realized this was an example of how an NGO should be working and it's an example of how their recommendations are really, you know, in perhaps in a minor way, which are really impacting on the prisoners. And we're very grateful to Jamie for setting that up. It was quite a unique experience and I'm looking forward to its developing. So we talked about so we're talking about it impacting on policy, on provision and on practice. And while we're on the peas, can't help but once a teacher, always a teacher, the reality is it's impacting on the prisoners. And no, none more so than what Per has just explained to us. This idea of the website, of, of, of it being a repository or a library or a store for teaching materials. And teaching materials that are going to help the most vulnerable, the most excluded. Not Irish prisoners who can get up to the school if they want to, but as we said, a, a, a prisoner from the Czech Republic who's stuck in a cell in Ireland, speaks no English, has no friends, and has no way of making contact with home. Now he can physically come up to our school and we can provide him with teaching materials in Czech and ultimately he can sit an examination. His own qualification, his own, uh, his own mother language or the, his mother tongue. So that's what I mean about impacting on all the P's. Now, it seems like we're making big, big claims for something that was a, was a small project. And we are making big claims because they are true. And anyway, that's really all I had to say about it. I suppose I want to go back to that whole thing that I started off with. I mean, I think at the end of the day, it is great and there's lots of things happening, but the nicest thing is the friendship that we made the trips and all of that sort of thing. It's just lovely. And it really encompasses strange coming from an Irish person but our rejection of the uh, Lisbon Treaty really. But this sort of thing is very much what I think the EU is about. You know, and it's about not us all doing the same thing. Because we saw that with Greece. They didn't want to do what we do in Ireland. It doesn't suit them to do what we do in Ireland. But it was the genesis of what we did, gave them the idea to adapt it to their situation. And anyway, I'm starting to drift a little bit now. But um, like I said, um, I would encourage people to be involved in projects. And no matter what you think your idea is, and if you can't really visualize it or get it together, talk to some experienced people and talk to a certain EPA about it. So I would like to take this opportunity to publicly thank everyone who was involved in the project, the teachers themselves, uh, our webmaster for all his work, our poor treasure Giza, who nobody has mentioned, who's had to be the money man to look after all of this. Very, thank you very much for that. Of course, Janine with the Council of Europe Connection and Valentina. It, this is her baby, and without her, it wouldn't have happened. So that's it. Thank you.